good morning from the repair bench. Uh, what I'm working on this morning is a little bit of valve work on a Jupiter sousaphone. What we're experiencing here is the valve casings are slightly out of round. Uh, especially fiberglass sousaphones, they have a tendency to flex and that puts pressure on each of these slide knuckles whenever a slide gets flexed and will sometimes bind up the valve. This is happening on all three. So the tool that I'm gonna to use to correct that is an adjustable valve casing burnisher. This is from Voton. These are no longer available. Um, you can make your own. There is a source for the blanks for these. If you're good with a lathe, you can go ahead and just make your own. Uh, but <clears throat> the principle behind this is you see all of these slots and then on the end of it, if I can get this loose, it is tapered on the inside and you can see the contact patch that mates up inside there. And as this is tightened down, it slightly flares out the metal. Um, and so the whole principle behind the action of, you know, potentially expanding the casing is that the force is equally distributed along the entire length because this is sized to the thousandth of an inch. And so whenever there's no force on this, we're going to be 1,003 on this end, 1,003 in the middle, and 1,003 up here. And then what we rely on is that as we insert this plug, this tapered plug, and it expands, that we're going to get just a micro bulge at maybe like 1,032, 1,033. Uh, so we're not going to overexpand the valve casing. And what it does is, if you can think of a... Uh, a flat like this, as that's put in, the force is equally distributed around this entire surface here. Therefore, it is going to be stronger than the flat spot on top, and that is going to push that flat spot up that's protruding into the valve casing. Uh, we can see how much of a contact patch we get after we do this first piston. Let me clean this off. I'm going to apply some generous lubricant. Then we're going to insert this into the valve casing and give it a spin. That passes through pretty freely. So I know that it is too loose. So we're going to Tighten that down a pretty fair amount because we've got a ways to go. And just slowly work it through the valve casing. You want each rotation to overlap so you get even pressure on the whole valve casing. I'm applying gentle downward pressure as well. And then that's going to pop out the bottom. We will take a look at the burnisher and we're getting contact from here to here. So that is pretty good, honestly. Uh, I can even get the micrometer and measure it and we'll see what we're at. It's all the way up at the front of the store. I don't have time to go get that right now. But we're going to proceed on through with the rest of these valve casings. I'll just go ahead and lubricate both of these. Once I've got it set to one piston, uh, it's pretty reliable that you can leave the setting alone for the other pistons, but you do have to listen to the metal. And if it starts getting overly difficult to turn, I need to put a torque wrench on this. That would be kind of cool to do and see what the ideal rotational torque of this is because that would give us a lot more accurate results uh, but I've just kind of got a feel for it because I've been doing this method for about six years now 
and I just know that this is about the amount of force that it takes to get the valve free without over expanding the valve casing. Uh, this can be a dangerous tool if used incorrectly. Like if you have a 650 mandrel and you try to use that on a 664 valve casing, uh, those are both box sizes, then you get too small of a contact patch and you actually, since you're not overlapping your strokes, you can leave ridges in the valve casing and severely over expand and damage the valve casing to the point that it's, it's almost trash. Uh, they can be rebuilt but you're going to spend hundreds of dollars rebuilding the valve casing on that instrument and that is something that we want to avoid. So now I'm going to degrease those valve casings. We don't want any of that lubricant left in there messing with the valve oil. Then we're going to test the pistons. I'm going to do this without the springs. Wipe them off. I didn't wipe the valve oil off earlier and that holds lint, dust, and all sorts of other things. So piston number three. And you can tell it's 7.30 in the morning because I just put that in the second valve casing. We're going to test it up and down. If it goes up and down on its own like that, Jupiters tend to have, older Jupiters especially, do tend to have a little bit of a uh, delay to action when doing this freely. But I can feel that there's no resistance in that valve casing when the piston is held in just the right spot. So we're going to call that a pass. And <clears throat> that rag was kind of dirty. I'm going to degrease this again with a cleaner rag. Because I think that might be part of what is holding up the valve action on that one. It's just not quite what I would like it to be. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little bit more off of these. That was a grease rag, not an oil rag. Piston number one. Yeah, that feels better. So this sousaphone is going to be functional. I'll save you guys the, uh, the video of the reassembly. You've seen me reassemble tubas before. You know, it goes pretty quick. feels great. Three feels great. There it is. And just feel number one again. Yeah. Yeah, they all feel the same. They all move up and down freely without obstruction. So that's a pass. We'll see you guys for the next installment.